In today's episode of Advanced Google Analytics, I will show you a number of goals that you can set up on your views in order to get more insights into your data. All and more right after this. Welcome back. In today's video, we will talk about goals. Goals are very essential in Google Analytics because it allows us to get into certain targets one by one and we can monitor and get insights if we're reaching our goals. The reason you put up a website is probably you want to have a lead capture or you want to uh, get people to register on your site in order to buy something from you or you just want them to uh, subscribe to a newsletter. There are tons of goals for you as a marketer or a, a website owner to get data into these goals. I'll start by going into my administration and clicking here under the view into goals. I've created a goal in the past for a lead capture. Today I'll teach you how to create multiple goals, each of which is very important. Let me start with user engagement goals. The goal here is we want to identify every time um, some of our users visit a number of pages. Let's say those users who are visiting um, 10 pages in one session. That's really important because these users are potential customers. If they are not already, they are people who are really interested in our website and our services. So we want to identify whether we are able to get this goal into our data. And the way you do it is we go here into custom, click on continue, give it a name. You can give it a name as engaged visits. I like to call it engaged visits instead of en engaged users because this is not a segment. This is more of a bunch of visits that have been achieved by a user and we reach the target. Um, so what I do is I click on here, pages per screens or screens per session. It, and, it, and it's saying that you can put any number. So once I click on continue, I can decide what is my benchmark. What is the number that when I reach anything after that, I consider this to be an achievement and a goal. In my opinion, if a user nowadays is visiting four pages on an average, these users are in the hot zone. So in the past, it used to be six, seven or eight pages, and that's considered to be high engagement. Nowadays, with um, with a lot of distraction around the users, I, th I think the number has gone down to almost four to five. So in my opinion, for my website, I'm keeping it at four. And you can decide if you want to give it a monitor monetary value. In my opinion, such goals don't need to be associated with money because they are more about creating awareness and knowing that some of our users have interest in my website or in your website. So I can see if I can verify that goal. Perfect. And this is a good indicator. So here it's telling me that if I decide to save that goal, I am be achieving a conversion rate of around 11%. And that is good. It means that I will be uh, getting that goal achieved almost 10 to 11% of the times, which is pretty good in my opinion. So I'm hitting save. There you go. Engaged views. Next, what else? We can create another goal, which is around, um, let's see, Next, we can uh, create a goal which is around registration. And that is similar to what I've done in the past here. Basically, it's a lead capture. 
where, and I'll explain what has been uh, set up right here, it's of uh, type template. You can go with template, create an account if you want, click on continue, and then inside of your goal description, you can have the name for this particular uh, goal. I call it lead capture, and it's of type destination. When I hit continue and I go down to the goal details, here is where the destination page is. Basically here I'm saying when a user reaches that particular page, this is where my goal needs to be fired. And it's true because a page that ends with the uh, sign up success is the page that is the end of registration. So it means that the user has already signed up and it was a successful sign up. And there is additional information here whereby you can create a funnel. And this is interesting because what it does, it, it, it kind of gives more idea about how the user got into your uh, destination page. And if there is a particular funnel that you're expecting the user to go through, this is where you set it, uh, where you set it up. And in this case, to me, it's just a previous page, a landing page for the sign up, which I'm calling the lead form. Basically, the page which holds the form that is when the user signs up for that form, they'll actually hit the, the destination page. So this is it. I don't have um, additional uh, funnel steps, so that's it. And I'm saying it's required and I can click here to see if I'm reaching my goal. Okay, it's telling me that according to my website statistics, I have a conversion rate, expected conversion rate of around 3% for this particular goal. And that's good. That's my lead capture um, or registration success uh, goal. All right, so far, so good. Let me go and create another one. The next one is a little bit more uh, tricky. Not a lot, but a little bit, because what we will be doing is using a little bit of regular expressions in order to identify the goal destination page. So what I will be doing is I'll be doing a custom uh, goal of type destination. And what I'm really interested here in doing is um, creating a goal every time a user uh, downloads my uh, business plan. And there are different ways of implementing this goal. You could do it through events, and that's another advanced topic. But for the sake of sim simplicity of this video, I'm going to keep it into a, a thank you page, into a success page. So kind of similar to what we've done earlier. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, uh, or let's say, let's keep it like this, down, downloaded business plan. Again, it's of type destination. Now my business plan pages are of type are uh, now my business plan uh, page download looks like this. And what happens is sometimes it ends with HTML and sometimes it does not. So in that case, we have to add a star, actually a dot star at the beginning and the end of this uh, keyword here in order to ensure that both of these different uh, URLs are captured as a destination. And make sure that you select here regular expression because this is of a regular exp expression style. Again, there is no value associated with it, but I would like to add a funnel. And the funnel name here would be viewed 
business plan form. And then you escape it and you put a slash. This is how my business plan page looks like. And I'm going to make sure that this is required. I'm not going to verify my goal because this is a fictitious uh, page. So it's not going to give me really any uh, predictions on the conversion rate. Okay, sounds good. Now, our next and final goal is also very important, especially if you have an e-commerce platform set up on your website. Whether you use WooCommerce, if you have WordPress or uh, Shop or uh, any other uh, e-commerce platform, you would have a more complex funnel. And that complex funnel will determine how the user is going through that particular funnel. So, uh, I think we might have some time to go through this quickly. Let me go ahead and create it. Again, it's of the same format. We hit custom. I'm calling this online store sales. And just to be specific, I'm including all products. Why is that? Why am I saying all products? Because the way my e-commerce is set up Every time somebody buys a product or a bunch of products, depending whatever product they buy, they end up on a destination page, which looks like this. The destination page is of a regular expression and it looks like this. Store. Thanks. That's it. It doesn't matter what products they bought. I'm not able to identify which products they bought. It just tells me that they have uh, successfully purchased something from the store. So my online store goal here, uh, online sales store goal is very generic and it applies to all products. So make sure you are aware of that. And if you are, let's move on to the next step. The funnel is on. This is where it gets a little bit more uh, tricky or tedious. First of all, I have to identify all the ways, all the funnel where the user gets uh, into my uh, store transaction uh, end page. So I start with a storefront. Okay, and my storefront, my main store, looks something like this. store category all store let's add another step my next one is store product Obviously, my e-commerce website would have hundreds of product pages or uh, store product pages, and these are of the uh, type, uh, which is a little bit more complex. Here, here where it gets a little bit more complex with the, um, with the uh, regular expression. Excuse me, one sec. The next step would be a store cart and a store cart is of the 
domain name like this. Another step is the store checkout page. And I also have one more step, which is a confirmation page that takes place uh, sometimes on the on the store just before you hit the um, you hit the success page, and that is of a similar domain like this. There it is. These are my five steps. So let me explain a little bit here. Basically what I'm saying is my storefront looks something like this, store slash category slash all store. And then my store product page is of the type slash uh, store slash uh, product uh, name or a product domain. And then it excludes combinations such as category product or cart or checkout or order or confirm order. These are the ones that are listed down here. So once I'm done, I can save it. And there it is. It's added to my goals. Um, you have nearly 20 goals per view inside of Google Analytics, so make use of them wisely. But there are some goals that you need to set up right away so that you don't miss out every time somebody reaches this particular goal. Today's episode was interesting. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. And if you have any comments, if you would like me to uh, take further examples into action, uh, such as using other uh, platforms, maybe the WooCommerce one, it's pretty tricky as well. It's similar to the one that I've just listed here, but it's a little bit different. The funnel is slightly different. If you're interested, let me know and I will have it as a special uh, uh, private only uh, link inside of the Webock membership. Webock membership is for free. You can sign up for one right now. But once you are a member, I will be able to share private documents with you, things that I've worked in the past that I don't want to share publicly uh, to everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe and if you like it, give it the thumbs up and I will see you in a new video. Take care.